Welcome to the Agent Program Initiate. I'll be waiting for you inside. Follow the lights, please. Majestic, isn't it? I'm Diana. I'll take you to your quarters. Someone likes to keep secrets. Secrets are our stock and trade. Besides, from what I hear, you have a few of your own. I'm not like you, in case you're wondering. I'm in the Handler program. Agents and handlers work in unity. You know the expression, know your enemy? Well, that part is my job. Knowing your enemy is only half the victory. I know. You also need to know yourself. I'm working on it. I read your case file. Impressive work. Hardly textbook, but I suppose field work never is. Tell me, what did it feel like, taking lives? Random. Disordered. Is that why you came here? Why you let us test you? Maybe I'm not the only one being tested. Well, we are here. Basic training starts at 0600 hours. I should leave you to prepare. Are you sure about this? I am. There are no second chances, Miss Burnwood. Not here. I choose him. May I inquire why? A blank slate? Antisocial? Apathetic and unresponsive? No doubt the boy shows promise, but... Perhaps I see possibility where others see limitation. Isn't that what a handler does, sir? We'll see. Anyone can kill Miss Burnwood. He still remembers nothing? If he does, he's not sharing. We will check up on his story. The hospital in Romania. In the meantime, keep him under close watch. Welcome to Advanced Mission Training. This operation originally took place in Sydney. The target was Calvin Ritter, infamous cat burglar, also known as the Sparrow. You will need to infiltrate the yacht, isolate and eliminate your target and exfiltrate, all without arousing suspicion. And remember, as an ICA agent, you are the most dangerous person in any room. But blunt force will get you nowhere in this business. And a true assassin never calls attention to himself. Good luck, Initiate. As previous tests have established, you exhibit an unusual level of enhanced sensory perception. Use your instinct now to sense the position and movement of people around you, and identify your target. Hmm. That mechanic is in your way. Sneak up and subdue him quietly. You put on his clothes. <laughs> That's a first. Might just work, though. People do tend to see uniforms, not faces. Be cautious, though. Some people are more observant than others. Not bad, Initiate. Right. They won't find him anytime soon. This particular uniform should get you access through the staff entrance. Just act normal. Hold on. That mechanic with his back turned? He's what we call an enforcer. He knows his crew and he'll see right through your disguise. So stay out of his line of sight. You're in. Well done, Initiate. Right. Now for the tricky part. Start by locating your target. Intel suggests he's around the bar area. That 
is your target, Mr. Ritter. Unfortunately, the place is crawling with witnesses. I suggest you follow him. See if you can't isolate him. Excuse me, sir, hmm, not on my list, to be expected. So to Ritter's private deck is off limits for mechanics. If assimilation is the name of your game, you'll need a better disguise. gonna leave a mark. Good thing we have insurance. Okay. Unlike mechanics, the cabin crew is allowed upstairs access. I see what you're getting at. Very unorthodox. I like it. private deck. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but according to Intel, Ritter is another enforcer who picked... ...his own cabin crew. So tread carefully. The target will spot you if you get too close. To eavesdrop on his conversation, try and find a way to blend in. Blending in, I see. Well done, Initiate. You're not a superhero, Calvin. They don't exist. Well, not with that attitude, they don't. Mr. Norfolk, so good of you to fly down. Can I offer you a drink? Oh, no, thank you. No, uh, not before six. My wife is very insistent about that rule. <laughs> my sympathies. So, excellent timing. I just had the computer set up in my office. Shall we? Yes, please, uh, lead the way. Nice impression. If we win, you can fix me a drink. Anyway, sounds like Ritter is about to have a private meeting with the gentleman in white. This could be useful. Sailor. Not a man of Wow, so you got the blueprints. Most impressive. People get what they pay for, Mr. Norfolk, and you paid for the best. Here, I'll pull the files for you. Not my usual scene technology. Most of my clients are art collectors. So what is it anyway? Some type of reactor? Well, uh, not just a reactor, Mr. Ritter. It's more of Any a Any second now. Fifty years ahead of its time. Maybe even more. Maybe 75 or 100. I, I don't mean to boast, but... Whoever makes it to market first with this reactor will become the king of the world. Well, I'm rooting for you. Now is your chance. Use your silent pistol. The client will notice. Birth date in reverse. Damn it. Almost. Your target is down. Now head calmly towards an exit. Well, Mr. Tell you, I. I had you pegged as a much more organized person. So... The red car marks your exfiltration point. Simply push the button, stops. and you're in the clear. They don't even know what's going on. Well, there's stuff on that face. Advanced mission training complete. And may I say, elegantly done, Initiate. I guess my hunch was right about you. I look forward to the final test.
How did you know? I told you he had talent. His stats are off the charts. Such skills and reflexes. They can only be the result of previous training. Power like that, with no moral restraint. He could be dangerous. I thought that was rather the point, sir. All agents have weak spots, Miss Burnwood. Pressure points to keep them in check. But this one... Perhaps it would be better to just... Give me a chance, sir. Give him a chance. I will take full responsibility. Very well. It's your show. Welcome back, Initiate. As an ICA agent, every challenge you face can be overcome in multiple ways. Complete this exercise again, this time attacking it from a different angle. Vary your strategy. Improvise. We will be watching. The art, huh? All curious. You don't waste any time, do you? Eh, I suppose on a boat like this.
Once again, great work, Initiate. This exercise is available for as long as you need. When you are ready to advance, you have only to let us know. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else, for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. The final test is based on an authentic 1979 mission. The high point of training Director Soda's career as an active agent. The target was Jasper Knight, a famous US chess master exposed as a Soviet spy. Soda's caught up with Knight at a military airfield in Cuba and eliminated him against all odds. This will be your objective as well. Now listen carefully. ICA exams aren't normally this difficult. Not only was the airfield a virtual fortress, but he even added additional guards. Sodas wants you to fail. He considers you a threat, and this way, your unfortunate exit from the program won't raise any eyebrows. Well, if he thinks we're bowing out, he is sorely mistaken. Good luck, Initiate. First things first, we need to gather some intel. Now, you didn't hear this from me, but I would eavesdrop on the two mechanics just beyond the fence. Did you print out the safety protocol for the jet? Eh, it's on the clipboard. Look, you really have to do this? All things considered. We're putting a pasty faced egghead inside a Mach 3 fighter jet. Yeah, I kind of think we do. I get it, I get it. Safety first and all that. I don't care which one of you does it, it's mandatory. Just take the box and get it done. So, Jasper Knight is leaving Cuba on a Soviet fighter jet, but first he needs to test the jet's safety features. Huh. Say you could somehow tamper with the ejector seat mechanism. You could presumably get Knight to trigger his own demise. Hmm. That might just work. Right. Let's get you inside. You'll need a fitting disguise. Hmm. A guard you... ...uniform should do nicely. But you'll need to draw him out and isolate him. Good. He's distracted. Now's your chance. And they say cash is obsolete. So, this uniform should provide access to the hangar. Good job, Initiate. Doesn't make 
makes sense. The, the man is like a sitting duck, staying in Cuba. It's only a matter of time before Langley catches up with him. If I was night, I'd be long gone. That was the plan. The night Okay, we've fueled and ready to take off. Good work. Are we clear to go over the safety protocol? Yeah, hmm, go ahead. I see. In order to make adjustments to the jet and perform the role of safety inspector, you're going to need a mechanic's disguise. In case anything happens to him or his girlfriend. Perfect. Now be gentle. He's an actor. Right, now to set the trap. The ejector seat mechanism has been disabled. You may need a tool to re-enable it. And now, to confront your target. Knight's office should be somewhere on the first floor. Well done, Initiate. I dare say this is an accident waiting to happen. Hey. Hey. Nice threads, buddy. Mr. Mechanic, what's up? Jesper Knight, we gotta go over the safety protocol. Follow me, please. Ugh. Oh, must we really? Yeah, whatever, mechanic man. Okay. Hey, Mr. Knight. Climb in the cockpit, please. Uh-huh. All right. Easy. One, one step at a time. Step one, strap yourself in. Uh, okay, all strapped in. Step two, locate the ejector seat handle. Uh, just a moment. Uh, yes, you found it. Step three, pull the ejector seat handle. Uh, right. Here it goes. Pull. Well, I never thought they would use a functioning jet. Good thing you didn't disable this parachute. Anyway, you did it. Excellent work, Initiate. I bet Sodas didn't see this coming. Now stay calm and head towards an exit.
guy who flew in from Moscow? Who? He's the real McCoy. That KGB officer? Netsky? Yeah. That's what years of special keep me training in Congratulations, Agent. You are cleared for field duty. Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the Shadow Client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the Shadow Client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they managed to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power, a hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought. Until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 47. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. 
make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven. Come in. Forty-seven, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere.
Welcome to the Barge Al Ghazali. I suggest you stop asking these questions. I will have to contact Central to escort you out. Well, I was just curious. Please get the precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zana Kazim. Sir, I understand. Zana Kazim, aka the Vulture, one of the top agents working for Crystal Dawn the Pan-African terrorist organization. I almost hired him myself once, but chose the Maelstrom instead. Now what is his business here? Enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood? Crystal. Listen, I want to talk to the partners directly. Make them understand why all of this is happening. And that terminal gives me an idea. There's a server room near the Sheikh's personal reception. If you can gain access to it, we might be able to recover useful intel from it. We'll have to work together to hack the system, but it's our best shot. It looks like the staff area could provide you with a viable route to the server room. There's a keypad lock on the doors to the staff area. One moment. All right, try this. Four, seven, zero, six. There's quite a bit of security here. One moment. You ready for some more fresh air, 47?
His Highness has everyone working triple shifts. There's something. I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have it. A... Try. Sheik Al-Ghazali is reaching out to his worldwide network of lawyers and financial contacts, attempting to restore the lost power base of the Providence Partners. If Ingram and Stuyvesant were asked to a meeting, thinking they'll be told of new developments, I suspect they'd jump at the chance. There's a lounge area at the top of the building. It can be sealed off for private conversations. If we lure the targets there, they'll be trapped. Server room should be behind one of the doors in this hallway. I must go and get the, um, uh, from the, 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 what did I say? Uh, stop.
calendar function. We can use this to summon the partners to a fake meeting, 47. All right, I'm no hacker like Olivia, but I think you need to pull one of the racks here to gain access to the terminal. Damn it, a silent alarm has been tripped. Security is on its way. Hide, 47. and their stupid equipment. I'm sick of coming down here. System online. Yes, sorry about that, 47. Let's try again, shall we? Ah, uh, I think I've got it. We'll need a key card to gain access. Someone in maintenance should have one we can borrow for a spell. That must have done something. Can you see anything different in the room? access the terminal 
and use the calendar option to summon the Providence partners to a meeting. Building cameras are now disabled. Good work. The meeting has been booked. The partners should be moving up here shortly. Huh. Looks like the lounge can be sealed off for private conversations. Andy? Excellent. I see the partners moving. You should join their meeting. Time to end this, 47. Elevator doors are now open. tomorrow I got it I'll get issued one tomorrow morning you know how it works because I don't the partners are alone now I'll activate the panel controlling the room's security features when you're ready Use it to start the show. Now we'll just wait for the partners to be alone. Then you can activate the room's lockdown feature. I trust his people will have multiple scenarios ready for us. What's this? Carl? Did you do that? I certainly... did not. I have no idea what's going on. Gentlemen, what's the meaning of this? You. You're the one responsible for all this. Gray, what do you want? Something that has been a long time due. Revenge. Revenge? How banal. You killed Cobb, Navikov, Caruso, the Washington twin, everyone at Haven. You broke into our bank. And you outed Providence to the world. Whatever perceived slight we've done to you is insignificant to the amount of damage you've caused us. You've caused the world. You're a murderous terrorist. Nothing more. What did we ever do to you anyway? You specifically? Nothing. Providence? Everything. Providence made me. And at the flick of a pen, Providence broke me. I'm just... Returning to favor. Providence has ruined the lives of countless people, expecting and facing no consequence for its actions. You take for yourselves and those who support you, and you burn everyone and everything else to the ground from the comfort of the shadows. No more. You're delusional. Exposing us achieved nothing beyond moving a few pieces around on a board much more complicated than you can fathom. The world believes we're dead. What more do you want? Me? Nothing. My friend, however, well, let's just say he's a bit of an expert. I'm just here to watch you die. 47. Finish. Okay, well done. 
I guess. Finally, Stuyvesant and Ingram are gone. Providence will soon be no more than a bad memory. 47. Thank you. I'll meet you at the rendezvous on the edge of town. 47. Finish it. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Nah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough.
she came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlyle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlyle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlyle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlyle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlyle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now. The target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlyle.
Would someone go see what the funk that was? No problem. Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Please do. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral. Hmm? My boyfriend has a restraining order. I, I think it might be him. Could you go see if it's him? Sure thing. I'm awesome. Good today, sir. I will have to pad you down if you're coming this way, sir. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they How seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. A hidden door. 
It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Aaron Ford Jr. calling. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account HTC Depot number 5085. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Uh, right. I'll double check and get back to you. Please stay back. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case. Uh, uh, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Maybe that's where it is. Boy, my last button. This is very useful information, 47.
sign of the grazer. Now, good idea. Yeah. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my... Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No need to panic. I'm gonna chase you down. Get over here, somebody hey. right. What's the situation? You're freaked out. Command, please acknowledge. Come in, command. Someone's causing trouble. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards.
Yeah, I can't let you pass. I'm sorry, sir. That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. idea what's going on. It's it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's it's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you. check on that undertaker in charge of the funeral. I got word he's upset with Madame Carlyle. I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room.
Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Greetings, sir. How are you today, sir? Oh, come on! Not even an apology. I mean, believe me. 
believing I'm on the dead is not exactly how I'd like to spend the week. And then she shows up like that. I nearly shat myself. <laughs> What? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few Hello, drinks sir. before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Oh, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough. All right. Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my... In Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? 
In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. You always led by example, rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs and encouragement. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I... Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can... Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Like hugs and encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and could not make my way down. I was scared and called out for help. Of all people, you heard me, and when you saw me, you climbed the tree. I was relieved that help had finally arrived. But you went down immediately and said, when a grown-up can do it, so can you, Ed. <laughs> You are five, and climbing trees is supposed to be your area of expertise. Oh, no, that won't go. You just think I remember this because I was weak. Zachary's dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell Emma, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. She can't wait to get her hands on Thornbridge Manor. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But that is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step. Gossiping at work, both. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. I'm going to be a dad. I remember how it was with the first one. 
That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. But you're right. It's beautiful. Why waste away in front of the book? Forty-one guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. A fake funeral tomorrow? Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect me, why? How do you each do that? Mary is so upset. And she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? I feel weak in my knees from all the tension here. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will settle down soon. But she just makes me so angry. What is it now? Elaine says she saw her on the top floor, stroking the door. Alexa got Okay, I'll just... 
pretending to look like I have the faintest idea of what I'm doing. Up and running. Long inside. Is everything ready for tomorrow? I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? How are you? How about that promotion I thought might be coming my way? Yeah. Well, don't count on it. No, I didn't expect this. Yates didn't even warn me. Now he's just to my call. Hello there, sir.
Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard, trophy room, and the office safe is hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering it. It's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah, it's impressive. All right. A safe in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. Mission complete. Well done, 47.
Hello, this is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex-wife. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it again. He seems to believe that Alexa has come back from the dead and that he has to write the eulogy for some make-believe funeral event. I still have the restraining order on him, so whoever gets this message now that Alexa is dead, better get him under control. Otherwise, I can tell no other way. Still alive, huh? Good on ya. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. 
What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now.